Let's get started on Chapter 10, Section 3, Present Value and Future Value. Let's talk about those terms, present value and future value. The present value is the starting deposit, okay? and we also call that present value, which is money deposited today. We also call it the principal. Okay? If you see any of those terms, principal, present value, that means the money you're starting with today. The future value, we've also called maturity value, and that's the amount at the end of the account. Okay? So present value, the amount you initially deposit today, future value, the amount at the end of the account. So those are the two to kind of keep track of. Question one, find the lump sum present value today to have a future value of $42,000. So think of this, we wanna look at what this money is worth today. In the future, it's gonna to grow to become $42,000. But we wanna to know today's value, okay? Our time is five years and it earns 6% compounded semi-annually. We need to calculate the I and the N in a similar way to what we did in chat, uh, section one. So the I, we took the 6% and we divided it by the number of times we compound each year, in this case, semi-annually. And semi-annually means two times a year. So we're gonna use the 3% column in our table that says present value. And remember, present value means today, principal. Okay. To calculate the N, that's the number of times that interest is calculated over the entire life of the loan. That means it's calculated semi-annually, two times a year, for five years. So two times five is 10. That's gonna help us go to row 10 and we said that we're gonna look down the 3% column and find where they intersect. In this case, we have the decimal 0 0.74409. To calculate that present value, we're gonna take the future value, what it's worth at the end of the account. For this question, that's $42,000, and multiply by that table value, 0 0.4409 excuse me, 0 0.74409. Multiplying them together, I get a present value of $31,251.78. Now again, I always like to see if this makes sense. Does it make sense that the present value is smaller than the future value? Yes. So we're gonna start with $31,251.78 and as it stays in the bank account, it will grow to become a larger number, $42,000, okay? The second part says how much interest is earned. Interest is really the difference between the starting value and the ending value. So it's the difference between that um, principal and future value. So to calculate our interest, we're gonna take that future value of $42,000, the amount at the end of the account, and subtract the amount we start with. In this case, I get an interest of $10,748.22. Let's go a little faster with question two now that we have some of the terminology ready. Question two. In five years, Great Lakes Dairy estimates it will need $350,000 for a down payment. Let's go ahead and show that on a picture. Here's today, and I'm going to arrow forward five years, and the amount at the end of five years is $350,000 to purchase a nearby farm. So at the end of five years, they're going to need $350,000. Find the amount that should be invested today to meet the down payment. If funds earn 8% compounded quarterly. So for today, we wanna to look for that present value. We're gonna use our present value table, or we're gonna start with our I and our N. 
the I is going to be the 8% compounded quarterly. So 8% divided by 4 gives us the 2% column. Okay. For N, we're going to take quarterly calculation of interest times 5 years. So 4 times 5 is row 20, meaning that they're going to calculate interest 20 times. To find that present value, we're going to take the amount at the end of the account, $350,000, times that table number. So let's go find the 2% column and the 20th row. So here's our 2% column, and we're going to go down and find the 20th row, 0.67297. Multiplying, I end up with the value 235,539 dollars and 50 cents. And in this case, it just asks us to find the funds invested today. It did not ask us to calculate the interest. Okay. In our third question, okay, we have a, a sports store and the value today is 120,000. Okay, and it's assuming normal growth. However, the partners believe it will grow at 15% per year for the next four years. They wanna take this into account when they're thinking of selling their business. So we're gonna separate this into two pieces. We're gonna start with today, and we wanna find out what they believe the business is worth okay, at the end of time, and they said over the next four years. So we wanna find out what is it worth at the end of four years. Today it's worth 120,000, but they're expecting some pretty significant growth. Let's find what it's worth at the end of four years. So we want to find the future value. That's what we were working on in section 10.1. So we want to go back to that blue table for compound interest, which is our future value. Okay. Let's calculate our I and our N. Our I value is going to take that 15% and it's per year, so annual. So 15% divided by one stays at 15%. Our N says that we're going to calculate interest annually, which is still one, and we're gonna do that for four years. So one times four is four. Okay. To find that future value, we're gonna take the money it's worth today, 120,000, and multiply by the table number what we're gonna find is that the table number is gonna be bigger than one so that it's going to make the value larger. Let's take a look at the 15% column and row four. When we scroll over to the table to see all of it, I can get to row four, but the highest I go is the 8% column. Now, if you remember, we had this happen at least once whenever we were working on section 10.1. So we used the formula M equals P 1 plus i to the n power. So our maturity value is the same as our future value. Our p for principal, 120,000. That's the same as present value. Our 1 plus, we just calculated i as 15%, so 0 0.15. And our n, we just calculated as an exponent 4. Using order of operations, we're going to take 120,000 and inside parentheses, we make this 1.15 to the fourth power. And now I'm going to use 1.15 to the fourth power, keeping all the decimals I can, 1.74900625. So keep as many decimal places as your calculator allows. And finally, I'm going to multiply by the 120,000 and I get $209,880.75. And this is the value in four years, that future value, this one right here. Okay. 
The next part of the question says, okay, well, if they think in four years it's worth $209,880.75, so that's its future value. Okay. Now we're going to go backwards four years, back to the start today, and say, okay, well, if they're assuming that's the future value, what should be the sale price today? So they don't want to take 120,000 because if they invest 120,000 now, it's not going to grow to be the 209,000 that they assume for the business. We're going to use 6% compounded quarterly for the amount of uh, the amount of way they can invest their money today. Let's again use our I and our N. Our I is our 6% and we're compounding quarterly which is four times a year. And I end up with 1.5% for our column. The N says quarterly, interest is calculated, and we're still looking at four years. So four times four is row 16. Okay. Now make sure that we're looking at the correct chart. We don't want the future value chart. We want the chart that says present value for today. So we're going to use this chart here. We're going to find the one and a half percent column and we're going to go down to row 16 and find that number. So to find our present value today, we want to say that the company is going to be worth $209,880.75 and we're going to multiply by that table value for the present value table. And when we multiply, I end up with $165,392.33. Okay. I'm going to add on one more question here to end Chapter 10, Section 3. And that's question 14 from your textbook. Okay. It's very similar to the question we just completed, but I'm going to go a little faster through it. Okay. I know those take a little bit of time. So we have a bike shop worth $88,000 today. Okay. And the bike shop owner is assuming it will grow at 8% per year compounded annually for the next six years. So over six years time, we want to find the future value. What are they predicting it's worth? And this is 8% compounded annually. So to calculate our I and our N, we're going to take our 8% divided by annual, which is one, which gives us just 8% for the column. Our N takes our annual times the number of years so one time a year for six years is still six years, and that's our row. So to find that future value, we're going to say that we think that it, it's worth 88,000 now, and then we're gonna look up the table value for 8% column and row six. Finding that 8% column and row six, I get 0 0.63017. Oh, excuse me, I just made a mistake. Did you notice that? So this is very common, and let me tell you how I know it's a mistake. I'm wanting a future value, so my table number should be something that's bigger than one to make sure my future value goes larger. So I want to make sure I look back at this compound interest table for the future value amount. So let me go back to my 8% column in row 6, and now I can bring that decimal back, 1.58687. One 1.58687. And multiply to get a future value of $139,644.56. That's part A, to find the future value. And that's the amount we would put right here. Okay. 
So here's today. We found it's, and it was initially worth 88,000. In the future, at the end of six years, they're expecting it to be worth $139,644.56. Now the second part of this says, now go backwards and find the price it should be insisted on for the sale price. So what should we sell the business for? So if we know that it's gonna be worth a future value, okay, that we just calculated that $139,000 amount, we still are looking at a time of six years. But this time they say that whenever they look at investing money, they can only invest money at 5% semi-annual compounding. So here's 5% semi-annually. So let's calculate our I and calculate our N. 5% semi-annually is twice a year, so we're going to use the 2.5% column, and our N is still semi-annually, and this time six years, so 2 times 6, we're going to use row 12. So to find that present value, or what we should sell the business for, we're going to take what we think it's worth at the end of the six years and multiply by our table number. But again, let's be cautious. Let's make sure we get the right table this time, um, because I made a mistake last time. Let's make sure we're looking at that present value table. And our number should be smaller than one. So looking at row 12, the 2.5% column, present value table, 2.5% column, row 12, I get 0.74356. And then multiplying, we find a present value of $103,834.11. So instead of selling the business for 88,000, which is its value today, they're taking into account the rapid growth of the business and then working backwards to say, nope, we wanna sell the business for $103,834.11 so that we can get what it's worth in six years. That's the end of 10.3.